What's going on guys welcome back to the c programming tutorial series for beginners in today's video we're going to learn about conditions if statements and switch case statements so let us get right into it all right now we've already talked about booleans and comparison operations that return booleans so remember we can have a variable a being equal to 10 we can have a variable b being equal to 20 and then i can just print as a number so percent d backslash n I can print a is less than b and in this case this is going to return 1 because 1 stands for true and 10 is in fact less than 20. If I now change this to greater this is going to return 0, this is going to print 0 because it's false 10 is not greater than, uh, than 20 um, and I can also do the same thing with equals, with is not equal and so on and so forth and we also have if we include stdbool.h the boolean data type my bool can be for example true or false being represented by one and, uh, and zero um, and we can now use these boolean values and the results of these comparisons in order to do conditional programming because up until now what we did is we just defined uh, we just called certain statements we say add these two numbers define these variables call this function and so on we never had conditions but what we can do is we can say only do something if a certain condition is met so if a is less than b then print a certain message. Otherwise, for example, if A is larger than B, but still less than 100, print another message. And if none of these is the case, else do something else. So this is what we can do here using if statements. And uh, let's start with a very simple example. We're going to define a variable choice. It's going to be an integer. And then we're going to print something out onto the screen. We're going to say enter a number and we're going to get a user input. And this user input is going to be, uh, we're going to get it with scanf. So we're going to use scanf um, and we're going to get a number. So percent %d, we're going to get this number and we're going to store it into choice. Now, in order to do that, we cannot just pass choice. We have to pass a pointer to choice. We're going to talk about pointers in a future video. So I'm not going to explain pointers right now. But in order to be able to store the input from the user, the numerical input from the user, into the choice variable, we need to point to it. And this is done by using the end sign. So this is the pointer operator. We're going to talk about this in a future video. Uh, but still, this is how you store a number uh, from the user input. And now we can say, okay, if the choice is, I don't know, less than 100, for example, we're just going to do arbitrary stuff right now. So if this choice is less than 100, what we can do is we can print a message your input is less than a hundred, just some message. Um, and we can do, if, if this is not the case, what we can do is we can add another branch here else. And we can say print F your input is not less than a hundred. Just a basic message here, self-explanatory. So we have this if keyword here in parentheses, we then have the condition, whatever is in here returns either true or false one or zero. And if it returns true, if it returns one, we're going to enter this block of code here in the square brackets, uh, in, in the curly brackets. And in this case, this is just printing a message. Otherwise, if this thing here returns zero or false, we're going to enter this block here and this code will be executed. And we can see that this is the case. I'm just going to navigate. I am actually already at a desktop. So main C O main, and then enter a number. Let's go with 10. Your input is less than hundred. I forgot the backslash N here. There you go. So again, 10, your input is less than hundred. Now hundred is not less than 100, obviously, 900 is also not less than 100. You can see how this goes. So what we can also do here is we can actually go ahead and define multiple branches, um, so called else if branches to check additional conditions. So what we do here is we say if this is true, do this, otherwise do this, but maybe you want to check for other conditions as well. So what we can do is we can just say else if and another condition here, 
which is actually the same thing as calling an else block here and doing another if inside. Uh, but this essentially means if this is not the case, then try this condition. So we can say, for example, choice is less than 200. Because if it's not less than 100, it can be less than 200. And in this case, we can just print your input is between 100 and 200, like that, for example. Of course, you can also be more innovative with your messages here. Uh, I'm just showing you the principle. And now if I enter 150, you see your input is between 100 and 200. Um, and of course, I can also have if statements inside of if statements. So I can say if the choice is less than 100, it can also be less than 50. So choice less than 50. Maybe we want to put this below the print. Here we can print then print if your input is also less than 50. Like that. And now if I enter the number 80, we're going to only get your input is less than 100. And if I now enter 20, your input is less than 100. And it's also less than 50. And we can play around with that the else branch in the end is essentially if none of these things so we can add multiple else if branches here. So we can say else if something else, and then else if else if else if and in the end, we have this else that is triggered if none of these conditions are met then we're, get, we're getting into this else branch here. Um, and of course, we can have multiple ifs in a row. The difference between multiple ifs in a row and ifs and else ifs is that the else if is only triggered if this condition is not met. So if I have, for example, something that is not mutually exclusive, so the number can be less than 100 and divisible by two, for example, what I can do here is I can say, okay, the choice modulo two is zero, so it's divisible by two, it's even. If this is the case, I will print your number is even. Now, if I have it like this right now, it's only going to be printed if the number is even only if it's not less than 100. So in order to get into the second branch, um, the number has to be uh, over 100. So if I take 80, for example, it's not going to get to this branch here because it never leaves this branch. It, or it actually leaves the branch, but it doesn't uh, this condition does not return false. So once this block is done, we jump to after the block. So we, we continue with the code down here. Um, and if I want to check for multiple conditions, I can just remove this else here. So now essentially, I only have if and here I can have this else branch still I can say your number is odd. And now I have two separate if blocks. So I can say, okay, if the choice is less than 100, print that. And then if it's divisible by two, print that. So I now have two separate blocks. And you can see if I enter now 80, it works. Now, if else statements are not the only statements that we can use in order to do conditional programming, there's also something called switch case, uh, which works a little bit differently, because we're not checking for conditions, we're mapping values to certain cases. So let's remove all this, let's keep the choice. Uh, but instead of checking for whether the choice is something or is not something, what we can do is we can do switch case. So we can say switch choice. This is um, defining that choice is the variable that we're looking at. We're looking at choice. And by looking at choice, we can distinguish certain cases. So we can say, for example, there is the case that choice is 100, for example. Uh, and we use this colon here, like in Python, in order to open this block. So we say case. 100. And if this case is true, I can say 100, for example, I can just print this. Uh, and then it's important to break the case. So I need to add a break here in order to say, okay, this case is now, uh, this case is now over, there are other cases as well. So for example, I can say there's a case that the choice is 10, for example, then I can print 10, whatever, and so on and so forth. This can be very useful if we have a menu where we can select options one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I can say, okay, the option six was selected, open this case here, and so on. And there's also the case that there uh, that no case is specified. So here we have the two cases 110. But what happens if I enter five, then we can define a so called default case, um, essentially called default like that. And here I can say, print F not 10 and not 
one hundred like that and we can break this as well um and if i now do the, uh, do this if i now run this you can see that if i enter seven for example not 10 and not 100 if i enter 10 10 and if i enter 100 100 so a very simple thing we get a variable here and we map it to certain things so we say okay if this value that i pass here is 100 then get into this case if it's 10 get into that case if i cannot find the respective case go into default now it's important that you break the cases because if you don't do it, you're basically jumping into the next case. So if I remove the break here and I compile this again, and if I now enter a hundred, you can see that I get 110 because what happens is I get a hundred, but it doesn't break. It doesn't get out of this or it actually does get out of this and it goes into the next case which is 10 and it then prints also this message. So you always want to break the cases unless of course you have a reason not to, maybe you want to, you know, go down the next cases as well. If you have a reason for that, then you don't break. Uh, but this is how you do it. Now, one thing I want to show you here as well is that you can also pass values right away into switch case and into um, if so if I say something a very trivial thing here, if I say if true, this is obviously always going to execute. It's not useful to do that um, with loops that we're going to talk about in the next video. There is a case for uh, for uh, doing something like while true. If you're talking about if true, it doesn't really make sense because then you can just remove the if. Uh, and if you're doing if false, the code is never going to be reached. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But just so you understand, um, this will always be executed. Like that. If true. This is basically, yeah. I mean, the definition of an if statement is that if this thing here returns true, then you're going to do this. And if it's true as a constant, then obviously it's always going to execute. Uh, what you can do with the switch case is you can also pass, uh, I think at least you can also pass the values right away. So I think switch, switch 10 should work as well. If I have then a case 10 print F test like that, break, I think it should work. There you go. Um, and one last thing, or actually, let me show you one more thing first. So I can also change this to character. And then I can not only enter uh, a number, I can enter a character. And then the cases are not numbers, but the cases are uh, characters. So the choice is to switch here again. And I can say, for example, a could be the choice or B could be the choice you selected option B. There you go, A break. And for default, we can say print F, please select option A or B like that. I need to compile first. There you go. If I now enter A, you get option A. If I now enter B, you get option B. And if I enter C, please select option A or B. All right. So last but not least, I want to show you one thing called the ternary operator. This is essentially something uh, it's essentially an if statement, but we, uh, you can use it in a different way. You can write it in a different way. Uh, using a question mark. So let's say we have, um, I don't know, a Boolean that we call my condition. And it is true. If I now go ahead and I print this, if I now print F the condition, this is usually going to be printed as um, this is always going to be printed actually as a number. So I cannot print the word true unless I define it. So what I can do is I can say print F and I can say my condition. And then I use the question mark. And the question mark basically means that this is uh, the, the thing to look at, the condition to look at. And then I have the block that I execute if this condition is true. And then separated by a colon, I also have the block that I execute if it's not true. So in this case, I would say true backslash n is what I print if my condition is true. And then colon false is what I print if it's false. 
and in this case it's going to be true but essentially this is just a different notation for an if statement this is the same as saying if and then my condition condition and then I have this block here which is the true block here and then I have the else block which is the false block here now the difference is of course that this structure doesn't work like that. This is a more functional approach because here I have the function, the parameter, the value that I have at this position is determined by the if statement. I cannot do that um, with the ordinary if statement. Here I would have to call two print functions. But essentially this is the same thing. I say if my condition true, otherwise false. This is just another way of writing if statements. That is good to know. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.